Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree love sign. It's got an inspirational theme. Um, we're going to use two of these love signs from the Dollar Tree just to make it a nice big piece of uh, board basically. Uh, first thing we want to do is take off their hangers and then we want to take off the hearts. Now these galvanized hearts are so precious we want to make sure we save them so we're going to do this as gently as possible i'm just taking a really skinny flat head screwdriver and slowly going back and forth underneath the grooves that are actually you know uh that the corrugated tin actually you know the grooves basically <laughs> to pry up there is that sticky gummy um tape uh, not tape but like that glue stuff that you get um, and on this one, it actually stayed with the board. So I just want to show you, do you want to peel it off? I wasn't concerned too much about the um, the fact that some of the paper was ripping off because we're going to sand it um, and it's going to make it smooth enough. Um, so I'm just going to take a little piece of sandpaper. Um, originally, I was thinking fill in the holes now, but um, I'll show you how we're going to fill in those holes later. We're going to keep two of the holes, the two on the outside. Um, I'm going to fill in the ones on the inside. So I just gave everything a quick coat, uh, a quick pass of the sandpaper. Tried to make sure that those bumps of paper were nice and smooth as possible. And then I wiped it off with a wipe because um, I wanted to get all that extra paint residue off because I didn't want it to blend with the white when we're about to paint it. Um, of course, we're going to need paint and markers for this. I didn't mention it, um, but I very rarely do because it's sort of that always in a transformation sort of situation you know um, I am using three tongue depressors I at first said the popsicle stick seemed like the perfect spacing according to the front but it ended up being just a tiny bit too big so you try to find something that fits the spacing perfectly in hindsight I probably should have used that skinny screwdriver ended up being actually the perfect space but this was okay it would have been better if I would have filled in all of the space with popsicle sticks because you'll see once I paint it there is sort of about a one inch space just between like the two V's that is actually open up straight to the back um, and you can kind of tell, but you can't tell it. I can't tell it when it's hanging on my door. Um, but my suggestion for you is to go ahead and add popsicle sticks the whole length so that you could fill that in. And I stuck two little popsicle stick pieces behind the two holes so then I can fill them in with hot glue, um, sand off the excess, and then this way when we paint it, you won't see those two holes. Okay? So now we're just going to add Waverly white chalk paint. This one is kind of watered down. That's what I like to do at the end of my... Um, paint paint bucket not paint bucket but but paint pot I like to add a little water to it to make it stretch uh, I end up using more coats but it's not wasting the paint in the bottom of the pot either so that's kind of good um, but you'll see this these two boards actually have these natural grooves in them already um, so you want to make sure that when you paint uh, before the paint actually sets up completely you want to clean the paint out of the grooves um, this is going to take a couple of coats of paint. It took me two. And you could kind of see through it, but then we end up doing this gray wash over it, and then it makes it so you can't see through it. The only one letter I wasn't worried about um, covering completely was the L on the board that's closest to me, because we're actually just going to use that, <laughs> believe it or not, to create the word love um, for the finished product. Um, so you'll see, I just take that flathead skinny screwdriver and I run through all the grooves. I first tried it with the popsicle stick because the popsicle stick, like I said, did fit in there before when I tested it, but it actually is just a tiny bit too thick to fit in all the grooves. So I end up taking that flathead screwdriver, make a pass, wipe it off, make a pass, wipe it off, and so on. And you can see that space that I was talking about between the two Vs, how it is sort of like um, you can still see the 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 table underneath it actually um so this is the second coat um i actually was able to do it pretty much right away because this chalk paint does dry really quickly um and i'm trying to lay it on sort of thick i'm not too worried about getting it perfect on the edges because i said we're going to add that gray washed antique look to it i like a lot so that farmhouse barn board type of situation um but as soon as you're done with the second coat, you want to go ahead and clean off those grooves again. Um, again, this is just, the grooves are there. 
use them. We love them. Um, how many times you think about how many projects we made where we actually put our own grooves and stuff <laughs> using this exact screwdriver. Um, so when the board comes with it pre-made, you just want to make sure you take advantage of it. And you want to make sure that you accent them. Okay? So now I'm just going to take a tiny bit of elephant gray while the board's still wet. And you can kind of see the letters through, like I said, that second coat of paint. But when we add the elephant gray, you aren't going to notice most, most of them except for that one L I'm not worried about. And what I've done is I've just uh, dipped the corners and then the center in the elephant gray cap. Um, it's going to go on kind of dark, but then you want to blend it in. And you want to go in the direction of the wood, quote unquote wood, because um, that's what the natural graining would do. That's how they cut wood, you know. So I just went back and forth a few times. Like I said, it's, um, it's just an accent color. It's just a way that I like for my boards to look. A little bit weathered it's so easy that's another thing and you want to do it while your paints wet so you can get that really good blended look okay and I did it the whole way I set it off to dry and then when we come back we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint um, the words now you can still see love through here but once we write on it you really can't notice it like I said, I do want to use that first L, um, but if this is objectionable to you, go ahead and add a third coat of paint, or actually, honestly, if you would have used the Waverly Chalk Paint Solid Straight without watering it down, it would have covered much better. So, um, But that red is a powerful color, so it does take a couple of coats to cover it sometimes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take um, some Waverly Chalk Paint in Crimson, um, you could do this with a marker. Um, I will actually use the marker in a minute that uh, Dollar Tree sells those giant Sharpies, those knockoffs, um, which I love. They have a red. Um, you could also do this in black and whatever color you want. I took this from 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 4 and 8. I basically took out the things that were specific about love um, and I wanted to create them on this board. Um, the reason I'm not calling this a Valentine's Day project is because you guys know year after year I tell you if it's a love thing, it doesn't have to be just for Valentine's Day. Love should be in your heart 365 days out of the year. Um, so I'm actually making this for Jim and I for our bedroom. We actually have a 1 Corinthians uh, verse in this really pretty hearts um, that we got for our wedding that I love still. So that's in there as well. But this is just to bring in a little bit more of that farmhouse look. I did kind of mess up my E, but you know what? It's mine. It's handmade. I like it. You guys know you could use stencils if you want to. You can print out um, and do transfers if you want to. If you don't love your handwriting um, and you just want to do whatever you want to do, that's fine. Um, you also could... Um, line space out these letters better uh, I'll show you when we're going to do the bottom ones how we actually are spacing them out I take the Dollar Tree uh, square and I'm lining it up with the left side of the board so I get straight lines um, and then I'm drawing a line just the thickness of that ruler the thick part of the ruler I'm drawing a line on the top and the bottom I'm doing this in pencil because we can erase pencil um, it's just hard for you to see pencil on the camera. Uh, <laughs> but um, there is where I just showed you. I added the um, three dots. I know there's a name for the three dots. But I added them with that big Sharpie marker. Um, just to be like, you know, love dot 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 is all of these things. Or is not all of these things. Or does not all of these things. So um, the words that I chose, um, I'll share with you. And then I'll share you why um, I chose them. But what we're doing is not only we're we creating the space, then I took the skinny part of the ruler and I put a dash line above it. So do you remember when you were first learning how to um, write in school or if you taught your kids how to write in school, you got that lined paper with the dash line in the middle that's supposed to be the median point. However, the median point on ours, we're just going to bump it up a little bit. That just gives it more elongated, a more sophisticated look in my opinion. Um, and now we're just going to start with the longest phrase because we want to make sure we fit the spacing perfectly. The longest phrase is does not boast of the, of the phrases I chose. So I drew that one first. I just counted down where it belonged on the chart. Um, and then I created that. And now I know how to base, space off, base, 
base the rest of my lines off of that. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this. You could do center alignment, which is basically find the midpoint of all of your sentences, line them up down the midpoint of the boards, and so on. But what I wanted to do is I basically wanted to create all of the keywords lined up on the right hand side. Uh, I don't know why I felt like that's the vision that I wanted. There is no explanation for that other than that's just the look I was going after. Um, I was actually thinking about even making them a different color. Uh, but then I realized when I was using the, um, not the negative phrases, but the, yeah, I guess they are negative phrases because they say does not. Um, I didn't really want to emphasize the word boast, basically. Um, I didn't want to emphasize the word envy. So I just basically make it, made it so I can, uh, if you notice, it's not even right aligned. The words are all lined up on their left, but the words on the right are lined up on the left side of the words. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But we just did love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast, love is not proud, and then at the final end I added the red sharpie and I put love never fails. So for the very, uh, for the Bible quote I actually put 1 Corinthians 13, 1, 13, 4, excuse me, comma 8, um, because the top part is from uh, Corinthians 13, 4, and then Love Never Fails is from Corinthians 13, 8. So that's why I did that way. Now I'm making sure I take a white eraser. We've talked about this before. Um, if it's on white paint, we're going to use the white eraser so we don't leave any pink residue. And as I mentioned before, you can't really see the letters anymore from the signs below. Um, hopefully you guys can still see that that's true now that you have words. It's just an optical illusion. It just takes tricks your eye into thinking that there's nothing there because there's something else there instead. And then what I decided to do was to create a hanger using the red and white gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree this year. This year, the Dollar Tree's red and white gingham ribbon actually has some red glitter edges, um, which I thought was different. I wasn't really sure. I was going to pull some out from last year, but I wanted to make this this year with all stuff that you can get this year. Um, so I decided to take a good length of it, depending on how long you want it to hang. I created a bow in the middle, um, just by, like you would tie a shoelace, took two loops, crossed them over, and then once I did that, I laid the ribbon edges flat, um, made sure that they la laid flat and hung from the edge, and then I tucked one in each hole, and I made sure I spaced them evenly so that it would be a perfect hanger in the middle. You really want to make sure you tie that bow tight. You could even stab, stick a little bit of hot glue under the bow knot so it doesn't come loose on you. Um, but then once I had it evenly spaced, I put knots at the end of the ribbon to hold it evenly in place. And then I dovetailed the ears, the, the tails, excuse me. And then that's it. Um, I absolutely 100% love it, no pun intended. I cannot wait to hang it in my room. I, I just feel like it's us. I feel like it's us. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in making this inspirational love piece. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.